All right, guys, once again, it's Kanara Vernon Stewart. A little late on this particular video, but I still wanted to talk about it because it's so much important stuff as it relates to where Auburn's program is headed. As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. We're talking, we kind of sort of recapping the Tennessee game, easing into Auburn's uh, very, very interesting matchup with their arch rival, the Alabama Crimson Tide. We saw a situation, Auburn have not having played in, in a pretty considerable amount of time. Basically, one forced bye week and then one a bye week that you knew about. You kind of utilize this as a fall camp, but the players started to lose sight, started to kind of lose a little focus. Come out, first time, first night game at home. A little bit on the, like I said, the sluggish side. Getting down 10-0, to zero, you know, and a lot of folks really were shocked. I was actually kind of shocked. I knew. Well, here's the thing. When I did do my prediction video, I felt like Tennessee would score first. Tennessee scored first. Jared Guarantano, a nine-yard run, got kind of clothesline, suplex by <laughs> Smoke Monday in the end zone, but it was too little too late. He gets off. He shrugs his shoulders. All of a sudden, Tennessee is up seven to nothing. Tennessee then with the, you know, the 47-yard field goal. Now they're up 10 to nothing. Midway through the second quarter, Tennessee has scored three points. Now, what I like to talk about when you talk about Auburn football or any football team for that matter, which I, what I want y'all to do is look at the box score. Look at the scoring, unless there was just such a, a real crazy first quarter. Because usually the first quarter is kind of like a boxing match, kind of like a stalemate. And then things start to kind of open up midway through the second quarter, kind of like how it did against Tennessee. Now, you want to look at the, the second quarter, and you want to look at portions of the third quarter. And if you look at Auburn over the last few weeks, they've owned that portion of the football game. You look at teams that are winning at a high level, like Alabama, 42 to nothing, I think, against ten, against Kentucky between the second and third quarter. That's the meat of the football game. That's where the story is told. And Auburn actually outscored Tennessee between the second and the third quarter, 20 to three. Going on, actually, to outscore Kentucky, I mean, not Kentucky, but Tennessee, 30 to seven after being down by 10 points. Now, that's, you know, when you talk about resilience, you talk about a team that, you know, is a very young football team. That's a very inexperienced football team. Revamp the offensive line. Have their starting running back out. I'm talking about Tank Bigsby early in the football game, out for the count, hip injury. Now, here's the thing with those hip injuries. I actually had one of those before uh, playing football. Now, they are, I mean, it's super uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, especially a running back. Hip movement, is. it was going to nag him for the rest of the game. But when you think about it, I don't think a lot of the fans take into account the fact that Auburn has done a pretty decent job of recruiting running backs over the past few years. Because you look at it, 2017, Carrion Johnson goes down in the Alabama game, very questionable against Georgia in the SEC championship game. They uh, Auburn still put him out there on the football field, clearly not healthy, clearly nursing that shoulder injury. And guess what you got? You got a, you, you got a beat down mule that's just running the football with half his damn shoulder hanging off. Next thing you know, Auburn loses the football game 28 to 7. As a matter of fact, uncharacteristically, I'm think I'm going to call because of the injury. Carry on Johnson fumbles the football midway through the third quarter, and the rest of that game was a friggin' wrap. But either way, Auburn fast forward to 2020. Auburn's got like three running backs that they can depend on by committee um, outside of Tank Bigsby. You know, you talk about Sean Shivers. Um, you talk about DJ Williams, who appears. Now, here's the exciting part about this. DJ Williams appears to be healthy. He's running a little bit more fluid. He's got a lot a, a lot more hip movement. He's not limping and all that other bull after he runs the football. He had about 60 yards running the ball. And if you think about the total yardage for Auburn, without Tank Bigsby in the mix, that accounts for a lot of that. And then you, t you look at Bo Nix, for example, who has upped his yards per, per play. I think we still need that thing to be around eight. It's about 7.3. He's throwing about 61% of his 
passes probably the best in his whole entire career, including high school. So Bo Nix is even trending in the right direction statistically, which bodes very well coming into the game against Alabama. Now, one thing Auburn has to absolutely do is they're going to have to catch Alabama napping. They did it in 2018. Sean Shivers with the nice run. I'm talking about the nice run. They called it back for holding. I was talking shit at the time, but yes, um, he was held on that play. The the outside linebacker was held. I can't think of the wide receiver right now because I'm driving right now. My mind's kind of not all the way there. But uh, Alabama, I mean, Auburn definitely has to have some, some big plays. They also have to do some stuff. They have to do what I like to call they got to they got to kind of approach this thing the way Minnesota approached them in the Outback Bowl. Minnesota knew they couldn't track meet with Auburn like that. So what did they do? They slowed the game down. They started to do some slants with their, their uh, offensive linemen to make sure that they down blocked on the defense and left some holes open. They really were smart and methodical as to how they approached the football game and they definitely dominated the time of possession. So We got some good takes, some good things from Auburn. One thing that was a little questionable for me was the play of the defensive line. Um, Just seemed to be very, um, without having K.J. Britt's leadership, they're out of position often. Down block, out block the linebacker 20 yards down the field later, you got safeties making plays. I think the point of attack has to be a little bit more on the forefront for the Auburn Tigers in order for them to have a surmountable chance to win this game. I think Auburn has the athletes. They're going to have the tenacity. They're going to have the, you know, intensity to want to put forth ultimate optimal level effort to win this game. But if fundamentally, especially at the point of attack, is not there, Auburn has not played very well against good to elite offensive line lines. That dates back to last year, even with Derrick Brown and Marlon Davidson. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Starting the coverage on Auburn versus Alabama tomorrow. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.